Our focus needs to be on how we ensure our fate is not determined by others, how we ensure our decisions are our own. And if there were any doubt, Russia's illegal and immoral invasion of Ukraine renders stark our interest in living in a region where no country dominates and no country is dominated. It's true that Australia has always needed to apply ourselves with this focus, but it is especially true right now because our region faces unprecedented circumstances. And these circumstances require a response of unprecedented coordination and ambition in our statecraft. Tensions have risen between states with overlapping claims in the South China Sea. Compounding that have been the militarisation of disputed features and dangerous encounters in the air and at sea. China continues to modernise its military at a pace and scale not seen in the world for nearly a century, with little transparency or assurance about its strategic intent. In August last year, five Chinese ballistic missiles were reported to have fallen in Japan's exclusive economic zone. And just last week, China, we saw China practice strikes and blockades around Taiwan. On top of that, North Korea continues to destabilise with its ongoing nuclear weapon, weapons program and ballistic missile launches, threatening our friends in Japan and the Republic of Korea, as well as the broader region. Altogether, this combination of factors and the risk of miscalculation will comprise the most confronting circumstances in decades. So this is why I am so steadfast in refusing to engage in speculation about regional flashpoints, whether the Himalayas, Taiwan, the Korean Peninsula or anywhere else. In particular, there is much frenzied discussion in political and media circles over timelines and scenarios when it comes to Taiwan. Anyone in positions like mine who feels an urge to add to that discussion should resist the temptation. It is the most dangerous of parlour games. And my approach to this is not simply a politician seeking to avoid hypothetical questions. It's a frank and clear-eyed assessment of our interests. We do not want to see any unilateral change to the status quo. We call for the peaceful resolution of cross-strait issues through dialogue without the threat or use of force or, co or coercion. Because let me be absolutely clear, a war over Taiwan would be catastrophic for all. We know that there would be no real winners and we know maintaining the status quo is comprehensively superior to any alternative. It will be challenging, requiring both reassurance and deterrence. But this is the proposition most capable of averting conflict and enabling the region to live in peace and prosperity. So I'll say it now at the National Press Club to avoid any possible misunderstanding our job is to lower the heat on any potential conflict while increasing pressure on others to do the same. And the Albanese government does that here at home and we do that in our diplomacy. It may not sell as many newspapers today, but it will help you to sell them for a lot longer. <laughs> <clears throat> in our China relationship specifically, we will be calm and consistent and continue to do as we have since coming to office, cooperate where we can, disagree where we must, manage our differences wisely, and above all, engage in and vigorously pursue our own national interests.